Hey, this is Jersey. You're listening to the Garden State. You're listening to the Garden State, the only New Jersey podcast that gives you all the news you need to hear this week. My name is Josh Sobo. My name is Josh Chomick. And I'm Jimmy Parks. Welcome back, everybody. We are recording this week's episode, April 18th, Thursday. It's a rainy spring morning once again. I'm tired of the April showers. We're halfway, we're more than halfway through April, which is crazy. Yeah, it, it, this year is flying by. It's kind of scary. Do you guys feel that way? Yes, it's insane to me. I was just talking to Chomik before you walked in about when we did our Ben Gravy interview. I was like, that was January. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That feels like it was Mid-winter. two weeks ago. Well, even the ball dropping, um, <laughs> even the ball dropping, are you guys going to Hackettstown? Yeah. Did both of you go? <laughs> yep. That was yesterday, bro. That feels like just a few weeks ago, and it's crazy how fast time is going. It's I don't like it. Day. I don't like it. What is that? It's just we're getting older, you think? Uh, yeah, I think it's we're, we're getting, getting older, older. We're busy. Technology is like always in front of us, always taking our time. So I feel like that's what just makes the time fly by. It, every single week now, all of a sudden, it's Thursday. It's like back in the day when people didn't have phones, I'd imagine time didn't feel like this because... You didn't always have a rush of information in front of you at all times. Yeah. That's always like distracting you from reality. And that's why time is flying by. And it's scary. Huh. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I could totally agree with that. I think uh, as a kid, life moves really slow and you get older and everything's just move fast. It's bizarre. I feel like I'm, I'm 30 now. I feel like my 30s are going to be like that. Yeah, yeah. man. Th- then, then the next thing you know, we're in our 60s, brother. Yeah, this podcast. Our, will, our this, bodies are falling apart. We'll be at episode 6,332. <laughs> um, Honestly, that would be the dream, you know, like to just do this podcast for the rest of our lives and then just die. <laughs> oh, my God. Leave it to the next generation. So, but do you start looking at retirement homes yet? Um, get, like, your name in early? They got long uh, waiting lists for these places. I have not. I have not. Um, you know, but I, I yeah, I'll start eventually. I'm, I, I heard, actually, an interesting point about nursing homes. People were saying that the next boom, cause you know, there's all these apartments being built in New Jersey. The next yeah. boom in New Jersey will be retirement living, assisted living and retirement living facilities. Miss me with that. Because you have a lot of the baby boomers are aging up mm-hmm. and eventually they're going to retire and eventually they're going to need places to live. Yeah. Um, and their kids, I guess many of them will inherit their homes, but many of them won't have <laughs> homes for them to live in. Yeah. Um, there's just a big, a massive retirement that's about to, ha- about to happen with the baby boomers, and we don't have enough nursing homes. I don't remember the data specifically on it, but there's not enough beds. To- Ca- catch me dead before you put me in a nursing home. <laughs> like, I'll die in my home. Well, and then- the- Better start having babies then, my brother. I- I'll die alone. If I have to, <laughs> I just don't want to, I just, I just want like some land. That's it. Yeah. But a lot of times people go to nursing homes, not because they don't want to be alone. It's because they can't live on their own. They can't live on their own anymore. Yeah. No, hundred percent. that's why like the goal is to be healthy now before it's too late. I agree. I hope so we've got to be exercising. We got to be eating healthy because yeah. next thing you know, your body's going to be falling apart. Yeah. You just got to survive. Got to get after it. Yeah, I mean, I and you know, I, I, you know, if say I don't have a family one day and like we're still buds, I'd hope maybe, <laughs> maybe I'll be knocking on your door one day, just sell but lay me in. I don't uh, want to go to the nursing home. Listen, <laughs> man, I have a spare bedroom. <laughs> listen, if any of my children are willing to let me in their homes, I'd be pretty happy. Let alone first come first serve. Tio Josh, come by for a bed. Old man Josh, <laughs> man. Hey, yeah. but we got a while. Yeah, we, we got do. A while we have ago. some time. We, we're, we're getting ahead we're of ourselves. We're not even halfway through. Hey, wh- who saw the news? I know we shared it on our page, but yeah. Demi Lovato. Oh yeah, I saw that trolling around New Jersey this weekend, working on a movie. Mm-hmm. Um, did we talk about what I said to you, Josh, about the bathroom? On the, we didn't talk about that on the podcast. The bathroom no. on the Route Twenty Two. Oh no, we didn't talk about it on the pod. No. So Demi Lovato was in Cranford. She took. She was spotted taking photos in front of. Um, and bellies and bellies, the Greek spot, great spot by Amazing. the way. Love this spot. Go check out bellies if you haven't been there. And bellies is the spot where my pa- my family. It's like our default spot where my um, like for my anniversary, my parents give us a gift card to and bellies. Like, go get a nice meal. But we love and bellies. Bellies is awesome. The owner, the owner goes around, shakes your hand. Yeah, they're good. Makes you feel at home. Yes, they're just 
old school kind of people there. It's amazing. Um, and Demi Lovato was spotted out front taking photos with the employees. And then she went to, my sister texted me, Demi Lovato's at Texas Roadhouse on Route 22. <laughs> out of all the places. And um, so a friend of a friend, a, a friend of a friend's cousin, technically, worked at Texas Roadhouse, went in the bathroom <laughs> while Demi Lovato was waiting to wash her hands in line, wow. stuck her phone in her back pocket, and recorded her. Oh, you can't <laughs> do that, man. So you can't do that. And Demi Lovato immediately saw what was going on. No. Of course. And made a face like, like, just, it was just cringe. Why was Demi looking at her butt? Well, that's, I guess that's, that could be the retort is mm. why were you looking there of all places? But I mean, if you're a celebrity, you got to be kind of used to all the tricks people try so to pull. So you heard you. this story from someone. I saw the video. Oh, but they sent you the video or was it posted on the internet? Okay, so <laughs> it wasn't posted on the internet. Oh. So let me let me reframe this. I'm friends with a person. Their cousin works at Texas Roadhouse. Okay. Not a friend of a friend's cousin. A friend's cousin. Yeah. That friend and I were together and she was like, yeah, look at this video. And we're watching it. It was just so... <laughs> was it like a good view of Demi? Yeah, it's like she's just standing there. <laughs> she's just standing That's there so waiting. That's so creepy. And then she her eyes kind of look over and she makes like a face of, Oh, great. If you're filming a celebrity in a bathroom, man, you have, well, you have issues, man. I don't know. I could see it both ways, That's right? So because, creepy. Film yes. them outside the bathroom. It, extremely creepy. I will give you that. However, it's like one of those things where nobody's ever going to believe this. Like I need some kind of proof that this happened. Well, why could they just film her outside the bathroom? I think it's believable. I, I think going Demi Lovato was at a, was at Texas Roadhouse. Leave her alone. That's like that's like pretty believable. If really? I said to you Barack Obama <laughs> was at Texas Roadhouse on Route 22 and we were hanging out and he was he was talking about you know his bracket for the March Madness, I'd yeah. be like ah that, that sounds a little far fetched. A president at Texas Roadhouse, <laughs> I don't know. Demi Lovato, like what's the barrier to entry to meeting Demi Lovato? I mean, like she she's had a rough kind of last decade of life. I feel like yeah. I don't know. Well, so when I saw that picture of her in Cranford, it just made me realize how like tunnel visioned I am. Like I probably would have walked right past her and had no idea. <laughs> well, celebrities are just regular people. Yeah. I mean, that photo makes her just look like some regular person that's yeah. walking around town. Yeah. They're just regular people. I know it's a cliche. We always say it, but like they're just regular people. Yeah. With a lot of Photoshop and uh, other stuff. But the movie she's making is called Toe. Not like your toe, T-O-E, T-O-W, like mm. a tow truck. Do you guys know anything about this? Well, I, I was you. driving by, I was on Wana Ave, and I drove by the, the public library. Yeah. And they took out the library sign, and they changed it to Seattle Police Department. Sick. So I guess it's hap like the movie's taking place in Seattle, which is pretty cool. So what's with... um so many movies being shot in New Jersey. I know we've touched on it before. And one of our stories today actually relates to this with a, a studio going in. Um, but I was just curious to, to recap for the listeners, what's going on with all these movies? Cause there's, this is, we're going to be seeing a lot more celebrities in New Jersey in the next yeah. decade. It's going to be very common. I think to be like, Oh, Tom Cruise is spotted in Monmouth County. I think that's going to be where we're going. Of course. Yeah. And uh, so actually the story later is about Carteret I was going to say Carteret would be a great place to buy some real estate right now, mm -hmm. like to build an apartment building or something. Like this is your move if you're one of those developers, because once that property goes in, it's going to change that landscape completely. Oh, 100%. Yeah. So, um, well, New Jersey. First off, New Jersey is absolutely beautiful, and we're so diverse here. You could really, you could fake any location in New Jersey and say it's that location, because we got everything. You know, mountains, farms, beaches, everything. Hmm. So I think that's like a big reason why. And also the, isn't it because of the tax credit in Jersey? Yeah. Yeah. So the tax, the tax code has changed where it's very advantageous for these companies to do work in New Jersey financially. There's a lot of financial benefit. Um, by the way, this movie toe is about a homeless woman and she's caught in a tow company. What does that even mean? <laughs> 
like I'm trying to find out on Reddit right now what's going on with this movie. She works on like tow truck yard. <laughs> Sounds like she's a homeless lady that's stuck. You know, her car got towed and she's trying to reclaim her life. And the car that held it all together with a tow bill of $21,634. This sounds like a movie I'd make up. Like it sounds like a, it sounds like a made up premise for a movie. It's very, uh, very exciting. She's stuck because she had a car get towed and she needs to work in a local diner to raise the funds. Like, Is that really the premise? <laughs> no, well, the premise is um, she's an, Oh, this article says unhoused. I love how politically correct. Deadline. So she's a homeless Seattle woman. Uh, she's trying to reclaim her life in the car that held it all together after receiving a tow bill of $21,634. Ogle also serves as... Oh, that's the director of the movie. Yeah, that's all it says. I mean... Is Demi Lovato the, the, the unhoused woman? Josh, I don't know, but, you know, knowing Demi... Anything's possible. I mean, she she she, she can she could pull off the in house look yeah. if she really wanted to. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. She's an actress. She's great. So you're saying you're saying Demi Lovato looks homeless? I mean, like no. I mean, she's an actress. She can do whatever she wants. Hmm. But I'm, I'm just wondering. I'm like an A list celebrity like that. Come on, how are you not the star of this movie? Yeah, I think she's probably the star. What else are you going to be like a, you can't just be a tow like truck a, driver. Yeah. You can't be the tow truck driver. <laughs> you picture Demi Lovato driving the tow truck. Man, I, would, I, I would assume she's the star. I didn't see any other big names. Man, this movie is going to be great. Also, didn't they say uh, just now, Timothy, uh, what's his name? Chalamet. Chalamet. He was at Echo Lake filming a movie. What? Yes. You didn't hear about this? Like a few weeks ago. It's a different movie. Timothy, that- it's in Echo Lake Park. What? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, for the Bob Dylan movie. They I was were at Echo say, Lake. This was at Echo Lake Park? Yeah. Wow. I saw um the prop cars for the Bob Dylan movie yesterday when I was driving in Jersey City. Yeah, they're all over Jersey. So Jersey's becoming Jersey's really over. Oh. If we're becoming the new Hollywood, it's over. And oh yeah. My sister works in Hoboken. Her street uh, they were filming across from her job. Like last week, I think, or two yeah. weeks ago in Hoboken. So like, she said she had she couldn't park in her normal spot. The whole road was closed. She's like, Timothy's gonna be here. I'm just gonna try to snag a picture. Yeah, the, um, it's the same same thing that I saw. They're still filming there. Dude, the movies left and right happening in Jersey, guys. Why aren't we extras yet? We gotta so, we gotta do those sign up. We gotta do the sign ups for extras in these movies. Movies. Timothy Chalamet is playing young Bob Dylan. Yeah, bro. T- if you type it in, you can oh. see like photos of him everywhere. I'm concerned. I like Timothy Chalamet. Chal- Chal- what is it? Chalamet? Chal- Chal- Chalamet. Chal- I never say it right. He seems like a funny kid, but... Oh, okay. There we go. I'm seeing some pictures now. Eh, I could kind of see it, but... <clears throat> All right. We're getting lost in the in the sauce right now. A lot of movies coming to Jersey. I would love to know if people want to call in, what would be the dream movie to hear is being shot in New Jersey? Like Star Wars Episode Nine. A Star Wars in New Jersey. Imagine. If they filmed a Star Wars in New Jersey, where in New Jersey would it be filmed? Ooh, it'd be um, probably in the Pine Barrens. Ooh, with the Wookiees. Yeah, like the little running e- around the Ewoks. Pine the Ewoks in the Pine Barrens. I think uh, that'd be so cute. Or High Point, maybe. You know, that could be kind of a cool thing. But I feel like Jersey has uh, a lot of potential. I'm just wondering how the landscape of Jersey is going to change if if the Hollywood elites start moving into our neighborhoods. Yeah. Um, how so? I mean, they already... California is over, bro. It's. I feel like California is done. Don't you think? Everyone's moving out of California. Everybody's leaving California. Coming to New Jersey. Coming to New Jersey <laughs> and Nashville and Austin. I don't know. We don't, we don't want them. Um, let's dive into the mailbag uh, and see what we got. Someone... We, we have a few phone calls. And um, Josh, if people would like to call into our mailbag, what's the easiest possible way they can call in would love for you guys to call into the mailbag the number is very easy we even have a jingle by one of our listeners illtronics shout out to illtronics who made this for us the number is 908-67-99-99-3 hey guys this is a uh first time caller long time listener or is it the other way around um (laughs) but i just heard your story about the Shop right, the shopping carts going missing, and I'm literally at a shop right right now in Woodland Park, and I'm seeing somebody run away with a shopping cart. So I don't know if it's 
all coincidence or not, but uh, this is this is this is wild. As as I'm listening to your your story, there's somebody running away with a shopping cart, and yes, they are gray. Um, and to Jimmy's point, what he saw out in California about the wheels locking, I saw that here in Jersey too. A uh, couple of a uh, shop right that used to be up in Wayne had something very similar, and I've seen it at, at Target a couple of a uh, couple of times too. But love you guys. Keep doing what you're doing. Love your merch. Stay blessed. You saw someone running away with a shopping cart. Yeah, we got what, a lot. What's of, that scene look like? We got a lot of <clears throat> response um, on that particular post saying those guys that stole the shopping carts for the context for people that don't know last week we had a story where two gentlemen one guy was in his 70s stole 160 shopping carts from a local shop right everybody was saying scrappers they're scrappers yeah everyone was like guys come on they're scrapping obviously but no i think it was confirmed they were selling it to other supermarkets so interesting it was confirmed I saw that in another article i don't know if it was confirmed but that's what one another article said it was like they they were selling it to like to uh, smaller supermarkets to make a profit. Wow. So there was nothing that confirmed scrapping, even though it makes sense. Well, what? But I like mean, people made it sound like we were idiots. Like, come on, guys. They're obviously scrapping, but I don't think, th- I think they were actually selling it. Hmm. I, I don't know. I mean, so this guy says he sees someone running off with one, and <laughs> um, that just could be completely an, un- an unrelated situation, <laughs> I would assume. Like, why, why? Yeah, I want to know what the scene was with someone actually running out of a parking lot. Or were they just taking their groceries home with them? Maybe they were nearby. I don't know, but the shopping cart thing, Jimmy, so to his other point about the lines, Jimmy was saying you were in California, you saw a supermarket where the lines... There was a a big line on the edge of the the parking lot, and the parking lot that I was in was the next parking lot over. So I was pushing my shopping cart. As soon as I crossed that line, the wheels locked. You could not move this shopping cart. Mm. I love that. It was crazy. How is that created? I have no idea. Is there something underneath? Probably what? like probably like an invisible dog collar. Same thing. Yeah. Oh. So it's like kind of like a the, the area's GPS. I don't know if it's marked. GPS or if there's I don't something. It's kind of cool. Um you know who has this figured out and we should just adopt this system everywhere? Who? Is Aldi. Aldi has it figured out. You put the quarter in the cart. Are the, is that all Aldi Aldi's yeah. currently? But the thing with that is the parking lot's completely clean. Everybody puts their cart back. Because they want their quarter. Everybody wants their quarter quarterback. So the the carts are always put away. You don't have a cart attendant picking up the carts. Um, you put a quarter in. You take your quarter out. You do the you do your part. Like I don't know why everybody doesn't have. That I thought that system. was like an older, like an old school thing. I remember going to Pathmark as a kid, and Pathmark we had to put the quarter in yeah. and grab it. And I just feel like supermarkets over the years are kind of like abandoning that. But it looks like all these like the only one who does it. But why? It's just such a simple system to make sure. I mean, I hate how people don't clean up their shopping carts. Nah, man. They leave them in a parking spot. Like I want to yell at people when they do that. Yeah. It's just so lazy. Put your cart away. What's the, or at least put it on, put, put it yeah, on the cart narc. Put it on the island at least. Yeah. So it's not in the in a parking spot. Like I'll accept that because then someone's gonna come clean it up. Mm-hmm. But when you leave it in a spot. It just makes me nuts. I kind of feel like a satisfaction of bringing my cart back to like the cart area. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It just feels, it's a good feeling or like you're bringing it back and someone's like, oh, I'll take it and handing it to someone. Yeah. It's like, oh, I did my job today. I'd help yeah. someone out. Like I can't just leave it out there. I don't know what people are thinking, especially on a windy day when the carts are like being blown everywhere. You don't want to be that guy. Yeah. Uh, but who knows what's going on at the shop right in Woodland Park? We have a vandal stealing a cart, man. I hope they brought the cart back. Probably not. Probably not. But I mean, I don't know. All around, it's a kind of a, it's uh, the, the other conversation is kind of interesting because these guys were just putting carts, hundreds of carts into a van. What did they think was going to happen? Have you, I was actually, while editing that story, I typed in like shopping cart pictures, type in shopping cart right now and look at the prices of shopping carts, by the way. You're going to be expensive? like, my, yes. Really? Yeah. If you go to like uh Uline? Yeah, you do Uline. <laughs> Uline sells shopping carts, bro. I had no idea. Let's get the uh, the wire shopping Yeah, cart. do wire. Okay. Where so are they going for a 200, Uline? 260 bucks a pop. Is a wire shopping cart like the premium or? I well, imagine. I feel like everyone's like going base? plastic though these days, right? A plastic shopping cart is 255 So yeah. So the other one's more expensive. Mm. Mm. 
but that's like the professional I, I didn't know grade. like you could just buy like shopping carts like that, like off U line. That's pretty cool. The rolling baskets too. Shoprite has these. Those have the handles though. Those are pretty fancy. Yeah. Shoprite doesn't have like the rolling cart ones. Oh, you know what? Hold on. Let me check one thing. It was the quantity? Oh, a skid of six is two hundred and sixty bucks. Oh, it's six for two sixty. Well, steel. I saw them way more expensive. I don't know why. Maybe it wasn't Uline I was looking at. I don't know if that's. I don't know if I'm reading that right. But yeah, they're they're pricey nonetheless. I mean, yeah, you could spend a lot of money on some shopping carts. I would love a shopping cart for the studio or something. Imagine like we got like a custom <laughs> one that said the Garden State on it just to have it. That sounds like yeah. A we need more space, idea. like a museum, just so we could start like collecting a ton of cool things like that. Oh, a New Jersey museum. That's not a bad idea. Hmm. Garden State Museum. An exhibit, a pop-up exhibit. Mm. All right, why don't we get into some New Jersey news? That's what the people are here for. That's what they want to hear about. And, um, you know, we've talked about shopping carts and Demi Lovato <laughs> for enough time, I think. Yeah, no one wants to hear about Demi. Yeah, by the way, Josh, you're holding a golf tee over the, that side of the table. Oh, yeah. You don't, I, you know, you probably already know this, but you don't ever put that in your mouth, right? The golf tee? Yeah. Sometimes. You got to stop. <laughs> why? I Is saw, like a, I listened to, I was either a podcast or a video I saw where they were talking about the amount of people that get mouth cancer from golf teams. Really? What? Yeah. Like, because the, because the golf courses are constantly sprayed with cra- the craziest yeah. chemicals uh, yes, ever. Yes, you're right. Lots of guys get tongue cancer from just like they chew on their golf tee. Because they'll just be like, they'll just put it in their mouth. Well, like you get, you pick it up, you get in the car, you throw it in your mouth. Interesting. Like a toothpick? Yeah, like this one, I would use it as a toothpick because it's clean straight from the box. So, like, I, this hasn't been dug into a ground. Yeah. So, I guess it's fine then, right? But as long as it yeah. touches the soil of the golf course. Yeah, there's just this, I forget even where I heard this, but they were talking about a lot of people have I, died of... No way. Uh, mouth cancer, just different cancers you get from the chemicals are spraying. I had no idea. And then it's also an issue if you have well water next to a golf course. There's people that their house is back up to a golf course and they have, they have a well. Yeah. And you have to figure it, the golf course is nonstop spraying chemicals. Yeah. So you're just going to ingest all that stuff. Just, I, a, just I, a little I'm gonna, tip, brother. Next time I'm on the course, I'm going to be looking at different golfers that are playing. I'm going to see if they take their tee and put it in their mouths because like for I've never done that. It should be a warning. There should be warning signs on golf courses. I've never done that before. Like, I don't know. I guess, people, where did you hear that? That's amazing. I have no idea where I even heard that. That's really interesting. So yeah, good. If you guys play golf, don't be chewing on your your golf tee after you put it in the ground. Dangerous. Um, Chemicals. Here you go. Here's a little Snopes, and then we'll move on. This is Snopes. The fatal golf tee. A golfer in the habit of carrying his tee in his mouth while playing holes grows sicker and sicker over the course of a few days, then drops dead. What? A postmortem reveals that the golfer had ingested a lethal dose of pesticides mm. sprayed on the golf course. This is true. This is a story about Thank you for looking out, uh, man. a Navy lieutenant. And this is the specific story about this guy, but other people get different diseases. Um, like a Navy lieutenant. Yeah, so he played 36 holes. He was getting after it. You know, long day of golf. It's a long day. Um, at the Army-Navy Country Club in Arlington, Virginia. Even before the last hole prior... Uh, was complaining of a headache. By nightfall, he was feverish and nauseated and had de- uh, developed a rash. Four days later, prior was in Bethesda Naval Hospital with a 104.5 degree oh fever. Bliss, uh, his body was covered in blisters. He died 10 days later after toxic, a toxic substance had burned the skin from 80% of his body and caused his major organs to fail. So this is a specific Brother. case that happened. But what? people, I mean, like it's... You can get different diseases and cancer and stuff. So that's just a tip. A tip. Tip. I just want to give a quick shout out to. Remember, we did that story maybe a year ago about the brand new golf course opening up in Old Bridge. Yeah. How like courses are opening? I played it. I played Old Bridge Golf Course, the Rose, mm-hmm. uh, last weekend, and it just opened. It was, they had their soft opening in the fall, but they officially opened like this past March. Yeah. It was gorgeous. Yeah, it's nice. It was beautiful, just like in the middle of nowhere, Old Bridge. Gorgeous golf course. If you golf, check out the Rose. I want them to sponsor us. Well, let's get that going. So yeah, it'd, be, get. it'd be amazing. Hey, before we get into this week's podcast, we want to remind you that we are recording at the Vintage City offices in Elizabeth, New Jersey. We've been here since last June, and we absolutely love it. And we want to let you know that if you are looking for a place to bring your business, maybe you work from home, uh, maybe you are a 
seller of I'm trying to think of an interesting business idea, Josh. Of goods. Oh, a seller of goods. <laughs> or maybe word. maybe you have a, um, what are those tiny flea circuses? Remember those? A fl- like a flea market? A worm farm? A worm farm. You're, a, you're an extravagant worm farm dealer located in the Union Sick. County area. And you're looking for an office. We want to invite you out to the Vintage City offices. It's beautiful here. There are tons of amenities I mean, you just walk around and I've realized my attitude feels better when I'm here as opposed to other places because it's just such a brand new, beautiful space. And if you're looking for a space to work in, you can call or text them at 908-259-4488. That's 908-259-4488. You can come by for a tour. They'll show you the space. You'll also have an opportunity definitely to check out that big green and yellow neon sign, Mm. the Garden State. Make sure to come by, check it out. And if you do, make sure to tell them we sent you. Trying to farm some worm, dude. Yeah. Guys, we have a restock of our most popular merch items back in our store. We got the the green and black classic hoodies with the New Jersey map in the back with all the counties. And same with the t-shirts, the classic pine green and black tees. People have been asking us about these clothes for months. So now they're finally back in our store. If you're trying to get one, get one sooner than later before they sell out again. We also have hats, stickers, keychains are back. Everything's in the store. Go check it out today at thegardenstate.com. Support the show. And uh, we appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much for repping the Garden State. Back to the podcast. All right, let's get into our news. The first story of the day. This one is, this is really crazy. This is larger than life, kind of. I can't believe this is even real. And we got to talk this one through. A New Jersey toll worker escaped death this week after a nightmare prompted her to take a sick day just hours before a garbage truck hit her toll booth. That's crazy. It's a crazy story because this garbage truck just mauled this toll toll booth and she was home because she called out sick. Like, what are the odds? What are the odds? Do we know exactly where the toll booth was? Is there, is, was this an inside job? Like, okay. Was she a part of it? I don't know. The toll on. booth was um, on the parkway at the Barnegat Toll Plaza, okay. Jimmy. But it says a New Jersey toll booth attendant escaped potential injury or worse after she called out of work because of a premonition. The same day, a garbage truck crashed into the toll plaza. Jessica Daly, who works along the Garden State Parkway, told NBC New York she was jolted awake Friday morning with a bad gut feeling, like something terrible was going to happen. A second warning came at 4 a.m. when she felt she was going to get into a car accident. Weird. Wow. It was so strong that I actually called out of work. I never call out of work, (sighs) Daly told the broadcaster. Four hours later, a garbage truck slammed into a collector's booth at the Barnegat Toll Plaza, the booth daily is usually in. That's nuts. An explosion of debris hit a nearby Chevy pickup truck, uh, in the toll booth, a toll collector and the driver of the vehicle suffered serious injuries. This is so this is crazy. Well, um, one quick note on this that kind of makes the story even more interesting is there was somebody in the toll booth. I was going to ask, was someone in her place in there? Yeah, they're her substitute. Well, here's what she said. She said, my immediate response, honestly, I dropped to my knees and just started crying. I was praying for everybody involved and thanking God that I had that feeling to call out. She said, and she told, uh, she'd been told of the accident soon after. State police are still investigating the crash, and a spokesperson for the New Jersey Turnpike Authority said the injured toll collector has left the hospital. So wow. um, that's good. Uh, you know, kind of a crazy situation, though. That <laughs> she, she wakes up in the middle of the night, like, I, I have a feeling I shouldn't go yeah. to work today, calls out sick. And we all know the feeling of calling out sick from work. Do you guys get like this? I, I, maybe this is just me. I hate calling out sick. There's yeah, almost I, a yes. feeling where you're yeah. like, is it serious enough? Is this, is this that big of a deal? I never caught. Yeah, like it's, you don't want I would have to be stuck in my bed with like 104 fever for me to yeah. call out work. Yeah. So, Daly and her family were left with mixed emotions. Here's another quote. It says, I think her gut instinct was an angel or a premonition from a guardian angel telling her not to go and to protect her, said her mother, Jennifer. It's hard to feel so happy that my daughter wasn't there and at the same time, feel heartbreak for the ones that were involved. And that's that's a good point. Um, but nonetheless, divine intervention? What What's going on here, boys? Also, it's kind of crazy how accidents like this happen all the time with toll booths. Like you see photos of cars just ramming in between 
getting into a toll lane. I don't, I don't know understand. why. Yeah. Like, it's not hard to drive through a toll. Are people just not paying attention? And then you got the classic um, Jersey image where two cars are trying to go in at the same time and get stuck. Have you seen that one? Yes. Yeah. Well, I think that's something like that happened with this one where the garbage truck was going in and another car tried cutting mm. him off or whatever. And got that's you. what caused this to happen. Um, I don't have the details in front of me, but yeah, people are out of their minds and you've, we've all been cut off like yeah. last second trying yep. to go into a toll lane. A garbage truck, man. That's it's like brutal. Worst case scenario. Um, but I just find it so interesting that, I mean, like what are the odds? Yeah. What are the odds that you, I mean, like that's, that's like go buy a lottery ticket odds. Yeah. You know, that's so crazy to, to, to wake up, to feel this sense of, of uh, urgency about not going to work and then a garbage truck hits your toll booth. Like, I think I'd be like, whoa. And you know they're investigating it just in case. Why is that? It was an inside job. Oh, she huh. was an inside like, job. She, she was driving I'm not the truck. saying it is. I'm just saying they're investigating it for a reason, Jimmy, because they have to. They investigate every accident. Of course, they're, because it's just, it's too weird. No. Uh, no, I think you do, you're, do you're oh, ridiculous. Oh. She called are out you, of work. Are you... Are, they're and a garbage truck hit her toll booth, bro. <laughs> There's no. So, maybe, so you're saying maybe she wanted her coworker to get whacked. Something, you know. I'm not saying that this is what she wanted. I'm just saying this is what they're investigating. That's this is not actually what they're investigating. <laughs> it's, it's under investigation. <laughs> the accident. Yeah, every, uh, every yes, and, and why it happened. <laughs> Dude, this Dude, is amazing. I'm just no, saying, nobody's saying that she. I'm not saying. And now I'm not saying she was. <laughs> Listen, I'm every, just saying it's so crazy how. <laughs> How wild this is. Every car accident yes. <laughs> has an investigation. 100%. Whether it's a fender bender, mm -hmm. whether it's a, someone dies. I don't think the, <laughs> the point of the investigation is to find out <laughs> if she created an inside job here. But I'm just listen, saying, you know that question is coming listen, up. They're, they're, no, you know they're asking listen. the garbage man if they know who she is. Well, here's what I'll say. Here's what I will say. If I was a hard-nosed police officer... And maybe maybe one that had seen some horrible things and had less faith in the divine. Yeah. Maybe you're no longer a, a believing man or woman. And you hear this lady go, I just woke up from a dream. I could see you being a hard-nosed, yeah, likely story lady. Let's see what's really going yeah. on. Yeah. You, your boyfriend drives a garbage truck. I get what you're saying there. Imagine it was like a couple. <laughs> there are people like that that they hear a story like this and they're like, garbage. That's not true. Like they, they immediately will jump to being like, there's no way. Yeah. But to me, I'm like, yeah, it sounds awesome. That's a cool story. I mean, there's, there's cynics, you know? It's kind of wild. So uh, she, you know, she's getting back in the booth. And that's the thing, I think, after this. Will she have a little fear to get in the booth? Yeah, next yeah. time she sees a girl, she's going to be in the booth and she sees a garbage truck pulling up. She's like, uh-oh, uh -oh, I mean, uh -oh. It's, it's a dangerous job. It's a risky job. Um, why are toll booth collector's still a job. Well, I think that's why they're getting rid of them pretty much, right? Like they're replacing to all pay by plate or whatever, yeah. toll by plate. But you, yeah, you still see the lines, how long they are for those, uh, the attendants. Oh it's my ridiculous. Gosh. It's I, like, who's waiting in those lines? I know we've had this conversation before. Yeah, plenty of times. I cannot understand the people that don't have an easy pass and they're sitting in that long line. Yep. Like it to me is, it hurts Isn't my brain. Isn't it the same thing if they just drove through the easy pass now and they just got... The, they got a charge through mail or no, is it, think, there's a penalty still? I think there's still a penalty. What if we just got rid of tolls and didn't need easy pass or anything like a lot of other states have? Yeah. yeah like we idea. just got rid of the toll booths altogether. No, Josh, it's too complicated. It would never happen. <laughs> we so, waste, you'd lose so much political. Um, <laughs> too political. So uh, similar, but different topic. Um, do you ever think when you're driving and you see an accident, like right in front of you, mm -hmm. like I, I, there was an awful four car pile up and f that happened pretty much right in front of me the other day. And I was like, if I didn't do this, like one thing <laughs> and I left my house like 15 seconds earlier, like I would have been in an accident. I think that's all of our lives. And we so much it's is life. up to chance or just like, there's an illusion that we're kind of in control of stuff. Yeah. And all around us, like if there were alternate timelines of life, there's horrible things happening, but we just don't even realize it. Yeah. Which is, I think, why we're very ungrateful uh, altogether. Like, getting in a car, <clears throat> if you think about it, people die every day in cars. Oh, every yeah. day. Like, you're more, like, then I think it's 20,000 people die a year in car accidents, something like that. Yeah. Like, that's a lot of people. Like, you have a higher chance of being killed in a car accident than you are being murdered by someone. And, I mean, it's just crazy to think about. I mean, there's, 
Yeah, I think I do think about that, Jimmy. I do think about how, you know, unlikely things happen all the time. And the scary thing with driving is you could do everything right and you could still die. That's why when I got my motorcycle license, I decided against getting a motorcycle. I forgot you did yeah. that. I was ready. I was ready to go, and I was like, you know what? Someone else could do something wrong, and I could lose. I had that has nothing to do with like mm-hmm. me doing everything right. All it takes is someone not paying attention, just swerve right into your lane, boom. Yeah, yeah. And I'm dead. It's you know or last, paralyzed or whatever. Last year there was forty three thousand fatal car crashes. Whoa! In Jersey? No, in the United States. Okay, just make sure. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy to think about. They're death machines. So I wonder do, you th- if- are, do you think like with the, as they're transforming tolls, like, do you think with toll booth collectors are a lot of them getting laid off? Slowly, I don't think, I don't know if they, they can they lay get, them like, off. Po- yeah. Do they get like moved to a different position? Probably that. And what department's that? Transit. Uh, DOT. Department of Transit. That's all DOT? I think so. Um, no, because it's actually different because the toll road authorities are separate from DOT. Mm. So do what department is that, Jimmy? It would be the um, Parkway Authority or the Turnpike Authority. Oh, it's duh, the toll yeah, road yeah. authorities. So yeah. they get moved to like an office job or something. You think? They, I think they'd have to. I don't know if they'd be able to. You know, like lay somebody lay somebody off. That's I don't know how that works. I don't want to speak one way or the other. But I did DM this lady on Instagram and say, "Hey, you want to call into the podcast for an interview?" She has not gotten back to me yet. Although I did. DM her. She's probably in the toll booth right now. Maybe she's, she had an early shift. Oh, what if we go drive to the booth? Yeah, man. <laughs> and we just park. And, and like, just look like at hey, her. listen, I'm not a garbage truck. <sighs> man. Jessica Taylor. Nothing? Nothing. She hasn't even read it yet. All right. Well, let's move on to um, another toll booth related article. Um, you know, we're living in a toll state. That's New Jersey, right? Mm, that's life. Life is a toll booth. <clears throat> The MTA chair has announced that New Jersey will get a share of the congestion pricing. And all of a sudden, everyone is just so thrilled. I'm not. <laughs> Everyone's opinions just changed. Oh, we're going to get money. Okay, this is fine. Well, guess what? We're not. We're not thrilled. I wonder um, if this is changing like Phil Murphy's opinion, though. Well, of course. So and that, my, my point was going to be, and this is where I'm going to sound like a crazy person. People made this into a territorial argument. New York versus New Jersey. We need Jersey to win. Really, the argument is it's us versus these politicians. Because at the end of the day, money's getting collected from us regardless whether it goes to New Jersey or New York. Like, I mean, I, I, I want nothing more than for just there to be no toll going into Manhattan. And listen, brother, they're going to give all this money to Bergen County and Hudson County. whoop de doo what, how much better are they going to fix the roads to fix traffic? There's no space. I don't know. There's I'm so, no space there to fix the roads. I'll, I don't have any hope in this. I'm honestly tired of talking about it because I feel like it's beating a dead horse, but we could discuss the New Jersey portion here and then we'll, we'll move on to the next story. So New Jersey will get a share of the money when Manhattan's congestion pricing plan goes into effect this summer. MTA chairman and CEO Jano Lieber announced Wednesday. Lieber didn't specify how much, but it figures to be millions of dollars for key counties like Bergen and Hudson and likely several others. He said New Jersey's share would be divided uh, following the same formula already ascribed to neighborhoods expected to see a rise in traffic like the Bronx once congestion pricing starts in eight weeks. Specifics weren't immediately available. Any towns or municipalities in the uh, designated impact zone like Hoboken or Jersey City for example, would be due to receive benefits. The issue was a major sticking point in Jersey's federal lawsuit challenging the congestion pricing plan. It cited undue impact. A judge isn't expected to rule on the case until next month. So Governor Phil Murphy's office didn't immediately return a call for comment Wednesday. Previously, the Democrats slammed the proposal as a blatant cash grab, calling it discriminatory and an unfair tolling scheme. So let's Hmm. take those statements right there. A blatant cash grab... Is it no longer going to... I'm interested to hear what he says. Is it no longer going to be a blatant cash grab if the cash is going to his right. you know, to his budget? Mm-hmm. I, I mean, he might see it differently because he might say, hey, I could help New Jersey with this money. I'd love to hear what Governor Phil Murphy thinks. Um, also, an unfair tolling scheme and discriminatory. I mean, those are some harsh words from Governor Phil Murphy. <laughs> what do you think? What do you guys think? 
I would just, I'm waiting for the day that we get the information on exactly where the money's going to go and how they're going to be using this money and how much we're actually getting. I told you guys. Because like, I'm, I'm, at a, a, I'm at a dead end here. There's nowhere, you know what that area looks like in. Yeah, that's a disaster. There, you know, the George Washington Bridge. I'm starting a paving company. And I'm going to start bidding for jobs in that area. Yeah, and you're going to have to tear down apartments and, you know, take people's property in order to make more space because there is no more road space up there. And that's where mm. it's going to get tricky. So it all comes down to Josh Sobo's double-decker highway plan. <laughs> I think and if that is. doesn't happen, I don't know what's going to happen. I was thinking about that last night when I was like falling asleep for some reason. I just started laughing. <laughs> I, I'm telling you guys, the double-decker. And remember we, we emailed Phil Murphy's team and we're like, hey, we want to interview him. I was thinking about that this morning. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, here are the proposed questions. <laughs> <laughs> and when I was like, we, okay, so for the listeners, we I don't think we ever to, talked about we this. We need no. to do that. We though. sent an email to Phil Murphy to our governor's team, and we're like, we want to we want to talk to Governor Murphy. We got we got to have a we want to have a conversation with him. A but the out. questions we sent were all ridiculous. Like, should I try to find that email? And- because like that's the thing. We wanted to humanize the guy. Yeah. We wanted to have fun. We didn't want to make it political because people are so sick and tired of watching like political interviews and stuff. Like, we wanted to make it fun. You know, go back and forth with Phil. We like talk about the things we agree on, the things we don't agree on, and make it fun. Should I read the uh, the email? I'm trying to find it right now. Yeah, show let him know some of the questions we want to ask Phil over here. Um, gar- like okay, here we go. New Jersey has a reputation for traffic. Could you see a future where the Parkway is a double decker? Nice. Uh, license plates. What do we need to do in order to get some nicer looking ones? <laughs> the real questions, man. Hey, seriously, these are. Um, what's your least favorite town in the state? <laughs> That's a funny question. Put them on the spot. Um, you know, we got the you know the common ones: Pork Girl, Taylor Ham, Central Jersey exists, Bruce or Bon Jovi. If you could be the governor of another state, what show would you choose and why? They probably read this. And were like, <laughs> they probably read this and were like, these guys. They they got to be in like we got to try again because that's when we they, were smaller. We got like um, now we got some more power behind us. So then we said the state's flag isn't the best. We'd like to pitch some potential <laughs> new ones, and we were gonna have like five <laughs> flags lined up. <laughs> so, <laughs> we we, we got to try this again. We got to attempt oh, hitting them up one more time because this would be an amazing interview. Okay, rate these NJ Transit upgrades on a scale of one to ten. <laughs> Steep drop in track, so riders can have a thrill on the way to work. <laughs> that was yours, Joe. Um, adding a full gym car so people can get a workout. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, great. It's like if you ask like a fifth grader, like what kind of questions do you want to ask the governor? <laughs> Uh, we know there are quiet cars, but can we introduce a loud car so people can get their frustrations out? <laughs> Bro, this would have been this so... Genius. These, I cannot believe this team didn't get back to this because this would have been such a funny yeah, people interview. People are so dry, man. I can see Governor Murphy going along with it, too. I think he's oh, a funny he, guy. I oh, think yeah. he'd play along with it. It'd be great for his campaign, show people he's, uh, you know, he's a human being. He can laugh. I think those are great questions to ask him. The New Jersey Transit ones are wild. A steep drop in the track, man. That would be wild. (laughs) Everyone's like going through Secaucus and all of a sudden they drop 200 feet. You know, we talked about this a while back, but do you remember when there was a proposed greater Northeast corridor? A greater? No. What what was it again? So someone proposed, and this is is the really back to the, the congestion pricing issue. Someone proposed a massive Northeast corridor train loop where we would have a high speed rail mm. and it would go the loop would go new york to boston to montreal to toronto to detroit yes to washington dc to philadelphia back to new york yes. that's the loop and with a high-speed rail they were saying from new york to boston 33 minutes that's crazy can you imagine 33 minutes from philly to new york city 18 minutes the dream washington dc to philly 21 minutes wow so can you imagine 21. going dc to new york in, in 40 minutes 39 minutes Crazy. No way. That'd be insane. It'll never happen in our lifetime. It'll yeah, take that'll take forty like years to train, you know, to get a bullet train going around the northeast. But how much more sense would the northeast make if you could commute from New York to Boston in thirty three minutes? That would mean you could work What's in Boston and live in the speed of that train at that rate. From New York to Boston in thirty three minutes, your train has to be going um hundred and ninety to two hundred and twenty miles per hour. High speed trains. That's probably what they're they're assuming there. Hmm. I mean, how far is it to Boston? Like the, Drive the Boston trains are like what 120? 
Amtrak probably got like 113, I think is what the number I saw, 115, something like that. Okay. Yeah, so double it. I mean, yeah, that's 190 miles an hour, dude. That's yeah, it's pretty cool. Very fast. It'll never happen. But um, yeah, I really hope that Governor Murphy interview works out. I think that was just such a great idea. Yeah, well, we'll reach back. We'll circle back with the team. Talk to our people. You know, um, I line these stories up beautifully because this next story deals with NJ Transit. It's great. Um, no, I didn't even this see one's ridiculous. I didn't see this. I don't know why we didn't post the video on our page, but New Jersey Transit is unhappy with impatient riders who jumped from a train after delays. This is how you know people are really starting to lose it with New Jersey Transit. <laughs> Especially because fare hikes are coming. People are jumping off trains because the delays are getting out of hand. To be honest, I'd probably do this. Jump off a train? Yeah. If, if like, I was on a trip for like seven hours, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm out of there. Yeah, yeah. So you're being like kept a hostage. At I that would, point. I would 100% do this as well. I think it's kind of ridiculous to just be like sitting there. But here's what happened, and then we can get judgmental of the situation. New Jersey Transit admonished riders caught on video jumping off a Northeast Corridor train stopped because of an overhead wire issue in Metuchen on Monday afternoon. The suspension of service continued until Tuesday morning when several trains were canceled before the start of the morning commute. NJ Transit and Amtrak trains were single-tracked through the area, causing long delays with some commuters not getting home for several hours. Hmm. A commuter, Chris Squire, wrote on his Facebook page, it took seven hours for his train <sighs> from New York to arrive in Philadelphia. That's crazy. NJ Transit spokesman Jim Smith said the impatient commuters created a significant danger because of the high-voltage overhead wire involved. Exiting a train without proper authorization from the crew is highly dangerous and should never be done by any customer at any time, Smith said in an email. During an event like this, the safest place for everyone was aboard the train. Emergency evacuation should only be conducted under supervision of a train crew. Uh, what do you think, Josh? I mean, if I was on a train for seven hours, yeah, I'm out. Like, I'll risk the voltage to just not go crazy. Um it's just crazy. Like you, how often have you been on a train where you there's a delay and you're like, oh, we got uh, overhead wire issues. Yeah, it's, it's just happened. constant signal issues, and it's, it always comes from Amtrak too. It's like it's always a problem with Amtrak. I don't get it. Were you guys there that night when I one of the first times we ever hung out with my wife and her friends? I was not there, and I'm so happy I was not there. Well, you guys got I, stuck on a train. I woke up to like text messages and like photos. Of you yeah, guys. we were like, in Manhattan. Me, I think. Nervegna was there, maybe Mark. Yeah, Thanks Mark was Steph there. Was there. Steph. And we Steve. Were, we were taking a train back at like, like an 11 o'clock NJ Transit train. And we got stuck in Secaucus on the tracks for like three hours. Really? And we ended up getting to like Linden at maybe 2.30, 3 in the morning. Wow. It was crazy. And then we, me, me and Chris drove them. The girls, they were going to Rockaway. So we got back at like 4 in the morning. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but um, yeah. It was just, that at least I a fun like, time? Did you guys yeah, was, make the most of it? It was a great time. I just feel like this happens frequently, though. All the time. All the time there's a signal issue that's causing a delay, and that's why people are really that's why people are jumping off the trains, man. Yeah. People are pissed because, dude, in July, they're the prices are going up 15%. Yeah. And people are like, why am I paying more if these signal issues are not getting fixed? Yeah, I mean, it's it is pretty crazy. It's weird. Um, and that's that's the point someone makes in this article. It says, uh, the issue happens as New Jersey Transit riders are bracing for a 15% fare increase on July 1st, the first hike since 2014. The agency faces an estimated $119 million budget shortfall in the fiscal year 2025, resulting from a significant drop in ride sh uh, rideship during the COVID-19 pandemic. Hoboken Mayor and Congressional Candidate Ravi Bala asked Governor Phil Murphy to veto the unconscionable increase because the corporate business tax will generate the revenue needed by NJ Transit to meet its budget. So there's pushback here from a lot of different angles, but it's happening. Yeah, it's happening. People are going to, they're going to pay the fare because they have to get in. But this is the thing. It's like with congestion pricing going on, they want people to take more public transit mm -hmm. and more more people are going to be taking New Jersey Transit because of this, because they don't want to pay the congestion fees. They're going to get on New Jersey Transit. There's going to be even more delays because there's going to be more people. And it's just going to be a very messy situation, I think, on the tracks. I, oh, I think I think so completely. I mean, it's like if they want more people to take New Jersey Transit, they got to be ready for it. And at the moment, there's signal issues almost every day. So, why? Like, are we fixing that? Are they working on that? Like, I I have no idea. 
Yeah, I mean, it seems like NJ Trans is just caught in such a weird place because the work that needs to be done would be very expensive and they got to meet their <laughs> budgets. And it just I it feels feel- like a never ending race to the, to the bottom where they're always playing catch up, trying to fix. They're trying to fix things and trying to raise the budget to fix things. And, and it's like always like band aid, band aid, band aid forever. Yeah, it's always a band aid. And it's never like, hey guys, I mean, because they probably don't have the budget to do this, but it's never like, here is the plan to resolve these issues forever. Yeah. yeah. Here's the upgraded rail system. And I think part of that is just because they don't have the budget. <laughs> so they're stuck in like, like I would not want to be the head of NJ Transit. I'll be honest. No. Like as much as we hate on them, I would not want to be the guy who has to make these decisions because you're permanently trying to play catch up. And what it, what's the solution? What are you going to fire people? I mean, there's no good solution. You're either going to fire people or you're going to stop certain train times or there's raise the rates. I mean, it, there's no winning. Also, I would love to know the relationship between New Jersey Transit and Amtrak because a lot of the time you'll hear about the New Jersey Transit trains being delayed due to Amtrak signal issues. Well, that's because Amtrak owns the tracks, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Correct, the Northeast it, Corridor. And they have the priority, I believe, as well on the track. So. Just Northeast Corridor, Jim? Yeah, I mean, there's different ownerships for all these different lines. Conrail owns a whole bunch of lines. Okay. New Jersey Transit owns lines. Because I feel like they always put the blame on Amtrak. Yeah, because you ride the Northeast Corridor, and that line is owned by Amtrak. Got it. So someone's got to get. Someone's got to use the money they have and fix these issues. All right. Because there's always a signal issue. Let's keep it moving here. We we talk NJ Transit a lot. We talk tolls a lot. We talk Governor Murphy a lot. I want to move on to something a little bit more lighthearted and exciting. Let's do Let's it. Hear it. Something a little bit more fun that's going to probably hopefully get people dreaming of a new New Jersey. And that's, I think, what we got to get after here is we got to have vision for where we're going. And if you're on NJ Transit, you're not going far. You're probably going to be stuck. You're going to have to jump off a train. In Linden at three in the morning. But here's the vision for where we're going as a state. Carteret will receive $4.7 million in funding toward a new billion-dollar movie studio development. Carteret is getting the ferries into New York City, you know? Yeah. And now they're building this whole entire waterfront property, and it includes a movie studio, which is crazy. I don't think the people of New Jersey are aware of what is happening right now in our state with cinema development. We talked about this before. But there are movie studios going everywhere. Mm -hmm. We're talking Bayonne. We're talking Carteret. Mammoth, the Netflix studio. We're about to be Hollywood. New Jersey is going to be Hollywood soon. And if that freaks you out, now would be a great time to either buy some real estate in an area where they're going to develop or to get out of the state. Because I feel like things are going to get a lot more expensive. There's a lot more wealth that's going to be funneled into the... Like Carteret in 10, 20 years is not, there's no way it looks the same. No, no. you cannot bring a movie studio into Carteret and expect it just to stay. The, the landscape. Yeah, it's gonna That it's, whole area near the waterfront's changing completely. And you're going to have, it's going to, it's, I mean, I guess gentrified is, uh, I mean, Carteret t- was traditionally a very blue collar sort of area. I feel like that's the vibe I get in Carteret is it's like working class people. It's not hyper wealth. It's not poverty. It's just middle class kind of classic middle class town. And I feel like, <laughs> it ain't going to be that for long if when this goes through. What yeah. do you think? I I I'm, I have to go and actually scope the area for myself. Have you guys driven near where the ferry is recently? I haven't. I've been over. Actually, I was over across from, you know, there's that dump in Staten Island. Yes. That's right across from, I think, Carteret. Mm-hmm. I was over at those. There's a new pier right there. Like there's a new dock yep. people fish off of. I've been in that area. It's beautiful. What they've developed. And um, I don't know if that's, is that Carteret? That is Carteret. Yeah, that whole little park there and everything. Can you pull up the map, Josh, for Carteret where the ferry is at the moment? Yeah. That's where, I was next to where the new the new ferry. I just want to get a visual. I'm interested to see what the state's going to do with Carteret. Carteret's going to change. It has to. Oh, you got to think how many luxury apartments are going to be going up there. Oh, the luxury apartments are going to be luxury, Oh, man. my gosh. All these people who work in the city, they're probably going up already because the ferry. Yeah. You know, you can live right across the water, take the ferry into work. You're set. Easy. Easy commute right there. And you live in Jersey. I think we should just um, seize Staten Island from New York. Make it an annex of New Jersey? Yeah, I think we should just get it. Like, why is it New York's? It's closer to us than it is to New York. I mean, we should just do we it. Do we really want to take on all that? I don't that, think so. All that Staten Island trash. What? There's good people. In, I think Staten Island is basically New Jersey. Those people are good Stop. people. It's they want, very different. They want nothing to do with the other boroughs. <laughs> we like, we get want us nothing to here. do with them. You Stop. remember when we biked through Staten Island? 
Nothing good there. No good memories. Oh my goodness. You're coming hot at <laughs> Staten Island people. I, 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 lo- I didn't realize you loved Staten Island so much. No, I, I don't have anything against it. I just think they're so close to us. Like, what if we just, you know, added them on? At that point, let's let's just claim Delaware while we're at it, you know? They're right next well, to us too. Delaware, you know, I wouldn't be opposed to that either. Because Delaware is a very non how do I put this? There's no drama in Delaware. Delaware's chilling, dude. They're hanging. That's not a bad state to be in. But yeah, so this movie studio is going in and I'm interested to see what people think about this because New Jersey is changing. Oh, That's you okay. need to understand. It's always changing. But the state we knew from the 90s or the, you know, if you moved here in the 80s or whatever, that state's gone. I mean, oh, yeah. We're, we're going to be a state of, of a, an inordinate amount of wealth, I believe. See you later. I think there's going to be ridiculous amounts of wealth. There already is. We're a very wealthy state as it is, but we're about to see the landscape change forever. Mm-hmm. But on the flip side, I think it's going to be cool to see, watch a movie in theaters. Make, that was shot in Carter, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. That's like... Good feeling. Well, it's also not uncommon, right? We were talking about it earlier, to see these movies sets just around. Yeah. Like at one time, it'd be like, whoa, that's so cool. But now we're it's just kind of... We're so used to it now. Yeah. yeah like we're seeing celebrities it's around. Like it's like part of the landscape. Deal. And to your point earlier, Timothy Chalamet was in Echo Lake Park and Mountainside. Random. Demi Lovato in Cranford. It's like these people are everywhere. Yeah. Jenna Ortega in Clark. Really? Last year. Oh, that was at the yeah, the Brewer. Brewer. That's crazy. Wow. So it's happening, guys. It's happening. And what will happen next? We'll have to see. But um, here's what the article says. Carteret will receive $4.7 million in funding for its... Carter at Stages Film Studio Project, the Borough and the New Jersey Economic Development Authority have announced the project, part of a $1 billion 10-acre waterfront redevelopment project, is one of several receiving financial support as part of of the authority's film and digital media studio infrastructure program. Uh, The 1.2 million square foot movie production studio complex will be built on what is part of what was previously a brownfield site. Um, it will also be about 45 minutes north of the new studio being developed by Netflix at the former Fort Monmouth military yep. site. So this is, it's going to be kind of uh, wild. I mean, the mayor of Carteret is super excited. He says the Carteret Stages Film Studio Project will be an absolute game changer for Carteret and the redevelopment of the Brownfield site. I think he sees what's about to happen. He sees there's a lot of, about to be a lot of tax dollars, yeah. the wealth that's going to come in. But I think, you know, and this is what happens everywhere in the world. I mean, I, what are you going to say? You can't build a movie studio? I guess they could say that. I mean, this is probably an ideal spot because it's on the water. If you know the area, there's a lot of industry right there. So, like, it's, it's already there's warehouses up, up on that waterfront area. So it's not like it's they were going to put it in the middle of, downtown you know, no, Carter, yeah. right? no 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 so it's it's going to be secluded in an area where it's you're not going to know the difference but i th- i think the bigger question is how is it going to change the landscape of the area i'm just curious what the you know people who lived in carteret their whole lives yeah. what their thoughts on it are and like are they mad about it <sighs> maybe it's possible I don't know. Like we got to talk to our friend Lorenzo at some point this week, see what his thoughts are. He's a, you know, that's his hometown. I was going to text him this article and say, tell your parents to keep their house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You think their parents are excited about it or they're just like, dang, we don't want more people coming well, into Carteret. If your goal is to live in Carteret and raise your kids for the next 40 years, maybe, uh, I guess, I guess if you're in Carteret, you ha- own property, you're probably excited because your property value is about to go up. You got to think about like schools now. Like there was always like film classes in like middle school and high school. Imagine taking a field trip. We're going to the Netflix studios for a field trip today. That'd be really cool. Yo, that'd be a game changer, right? That would be, I think that'd be a great time. It's like we didn't have a film studio to take a class trip to when we were in middle school. I mean, it would be, it would certainly be uh, pretty wild. And I think it said that this will bring in thousands of jobs, Hmm. permanent jobs for people. In yeah. the area. On the bright side, yeah, jobs are going to come in, yep. which is great. There is going to be a lot of good that comes from this for sure. So, all right, let's move on to another story here. A woman in Montclair shot a police officer this week after saying the cop was in, quote, her territory. I want to know why they were first called to the scene. Hmm. It's like, is this like a crazy lady with a gun? We've got to go control her. I don't know. So a woman shot a police officer responding to a report of a person with a gun Monday afternoon. Shots were fired at about 
1.10 p.m. as Montclair police officers approached the residence on the 100 block of Forest Street, according to the Essex County Prosecutor's Office. Officer Michael J. Medrano, 33, was shot in the shoulder while a second officer returned fire. The suspect, identified as Marianne Swain, 39, of Montclair, was hit by gunfire. She and the officer were taken to University Hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Medrano has been released from the hospital. Stevens did not disclose the motive for the shooting. Neighbors told NBC that Swain, the mother of two children, confronted officers with the gun, saying that they were in her territory. A neighbor who was a retired cop said the woman was screaming, but he could not make out what was being said. So this sounds such a messy situation, dude. It sounds like a challenge of either mental illness or something. Something happened here, but thank goodness this officer's he's he's all right. He's he, he got released from the hospital, shot in the shoulder, um, and she survived getting shot as well. Um, so they're going to be able to figure out what went on here. And just, I, yeah, I can just prevail. imagine it was an insane situation. Like, this is my territory. And she's like shooting a cop. It's like, Unreal. is this lady like out of her mind? It has to be. Why are you shooting a cop? Like, did, did she feel threatened by the police? Because they were called to her house for a reason. It was not disclosed why. So I wonder what was actually going down here. And that's the information we don't have at the moment. No, it's just, it's just hearsay. And, you know, we... Um, we unfortunately won't know. I'm trying to figure out what area this is in of Montclair because I, I kind of know Montclair. Let me see. The 100 block. Here we go. Let me drop the little yellow guy. Uh, what is this? I know this. I know this area. Hold on. Huh. Josh, like, that's my aunt's house. No, I, I, <laughs> I've been in this area before. Interesting. Montclair, man. There goes the neighborhood. Upper Montclair moms, dude. They're, they Oh, the Upper Montclair moms on Facebook right now got to be like, is there any way that we could create a law where every gun would disappear? Gun control. Like we could just stop. <laughs> They're probably like, oh, I'd love to see the, the, upper, the virtue signaling from the Upper Montclair moms right now. It's be super amazing. I have a police officer question for you. Yeah. Um, when, um, you know, obviously an officer is being shot at. Mm-hmm. They're trained to shoot back, like shoot to kill, correct? Or because they said that the, this woman survived, right? Mm-hmm. But like the officer is obviously not shooting back, trying to. I don't know. I don't think you're ever. Tr- I, I, from what I understand, and we'd have to confirm this, I don't think police officers are ever shoot, are ever trained to like shoot to just hurt somebody. You're shoot to, you're, you shoot to kill. Yes. Okay. Head, chest. So you don't think it was on purpose that the cop, you know, that she's alive? It's, it was good. It's a good thing she's alive, but like maybe she was moving along. They just like caught her shoulder or something, right? I don't. I have no idea. But I mean, if you shoot a police officer, that's you're, that's a death sentence. Like yeah. you're, you are. Mm-hmm. She's lucky. She's alive. Yes. She should be dead right now. Yes, that's what, yeah. That's what I meant to say. Like they 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 don't shoot to go. Let me try to get her in the, the wrist no, or the no. knee. Like there's no way. Cause that's an impossible target to hit. You yeah. shoot for chest and head and she's lucky to be alive. There's no reason. I mean, as far as we know, it sounds like these two cops are just rolling up to see what was going on. There was drama and she starts shooting at them, but yep. more details will have to come out. It's stupid <sighs> to shoot a cop. Have you ever seen this? The suicide by cop videos? People pull oh, out yeah, guns yeah, just because they want to, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they want the cop it's to horrible. shoot them. And it's terrible. Like, it's a horrible, horrible thing. But that it's is terrible. You think about it, when a gun is pointed at you, you could just die immediately. Like yep. there's the person just has to pull the trigger. So the immediate response has to be to to shoot at a person that pulls a gun. Yeah. Yep. As opposed to if you're 20 feet from a person with a knife, maybe that's different. But I'm not a cop. So we'll have to ask the uh, you know, the the law enforcement listeners of the podcast what they think. All right, let's move on to our last story of the day. I, we've been doing these different sort of stories where we're ending with weird New Jersey or just legend, local legend. Yep. Local legends. Have you ever heard the legend of the blue hole in the Pine Barrens? I've been there. Really? Mm-hmm. I've heard about this many times and I've, I've explored the Pine Barrens in the past. I've been to like the different blue lakes and stuff down there, but I've never, I've, can you, can I finish my sentence? No, but I've never actually been to the blue hole, Jimmy. (laughs) So one of the most storied sites in all of Southern New Jersey is a mysterious body of water known as the blue hole located deep in the Pine Barrens of Winslow on the border of Camden and Gloucester counties. 
This small but legendary pool is said to not only be bottomless, but is also a frequent pit stop for the Jersey Devil. Ooh. Though its icy blue water might seem inviting, especially on a hot summer day, locals warn their children to stay away from the blue hole and to never go swimming there. Tales of unexplained whirlpools, which suck down hapless swimmers, have long been part of the hole's lore. Some who have been lucky enough to escape its clutches have claimed that they actually felt something, pulling them down into the chilly depths. The bottom of the blue hole, if there is indeed a bottom, is said to be made of fine sand, sometimes referred to as sugar sand, which locals liken to quicksand. When uh, we visited the notorious hole, we found ourselves navigating through narrow pineland trails made up of this same treacherous sand, sure that at any moment our Jeep would hopelessly get bogged down. So that's the weird New Jersey commentators. This is kind of interesting. So they're saying there's no bottom. How deep is this pit, you think, Jimmy? I don't know. It's not that deep. How so, do you know? I, I mean, I've never went swimming in it, but I think this is all, it's all folklore. So the bullet hole is approximately 130 feet across, um, almost perfectly round, and has steep banks. Its waters remain curiously cold, even in the hottest summer months, averaging... 58 degrees. Well, you have to think here for a second. Yeah. Um, the Kirkwood Cohansey Aquifer is not very far below the surface in the Pine Barrens. So, yeah, you're coming, your water's coming right out of a natural spring. And it's cold. It's cold. Huh? Cold mm. like death. Jimmy, why do you got to take but great folklore? Cold can also be related to depth as well. That's okay. what but happens. Jimmy also said it's not deep, but uh, did he ever go there and measure it himself? I did never no. go there and measure it myself. And no, it hasn't but been measured, so don't the, say it's not deep. The other like sand quarry blue holes that Chomik's talking about, um, a lot of people go there swimming in the summer, and they don't realize that how deep it is, and they get in the water, and because it's so deep, the water is so cold that their limbs kind of freeze up, and they, they aren't able to swim out, and then they drown. Really? Yeah. Do people drown a lot in these quarries? Uh, it's a few times a summer. Really? For sure, yeah. Yeah, because people left and right are trying to have a good time. They're hanging with their friends in the middle of the Pine Barrens to go for a little swim, and like Jimmy says, they drown. Or, so, does, the, or does the Jersey Devil get them? Probably it's the Jersey Devil. Yeah. So um, a New Jersey mom posted uh, her son's photo outside a quarry because he, drown- he actually drowned in one of these blue quarries the lakes and this seems like i'm googling it right now and it seems like it's pretty common a union county man 23 downs in ocean county quarry blue hole there the, you go yeah we've actually explored these many times like probably 10 years ago we used to go down south all the time and hang near these lakes we never went swimming in them but like we would explore but they're absolutely gorgeous you don't feel like you're in jersey when you're like it looks Carib- the- it's caribbean looking it's yeah. really cool because they're super blue yeah, that has to do with all the minerals. I don't understand the drowning, though. I get the coldness, but, like, I've jumped in cold water before. Like, my limbs don't freeze up. I just get out of the water, you know? I think it also has to do with some people who aren't as strong as you. Thanks, as, like, Jim. a swimmer. And Josh has some strong limbs on him. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty ripped. Yeah. No, but that, that makes sense. That actually makes sense that people are just not great swimmers and they go in. Did you hear about the blue hole? How you're not, <laughs> allowed, you're not supposed to dive in it? Why is that? Ooh. Should I get back to that article? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably because it's, um, kinda... it's not deep and you'll hurt your head. <laughs> uh, it's actually bottomless, Jim. <laughs> it's right down. Uh, oh, yeah. So it says, um, I mentioned the blue hole to my dad, who has lived in South Jersey all his life. Much to my surprise, he knew exactly what I was talking about. When he was a kid growing up in Blue Anchor, he and his friends would go swimming in the creek about 100 feet from the blue hole. My dad was told to never go swimming in the blue hole because it was bottomless and freezing cold. Of course, my dad and his friends immediately had to try it. One jumped in and climbed right out. The water was indeed freezing in the middle of summer. Another one of my father's friends dove in and did not escape as easily. The hole looks to be about 70 feet across and roughly circular. The edges appeared to be raised, which was consistent with one of the rumors I'd read that the blue hole was actually a crater from Mm -hmm. an ancient meteor. Bottom, um, at least on the edge, was only about a foot. An eerie calm hung over the spot when I visited the blue hole. So why not dive? Because they say, like, it starts very shallow, 
and then it gets deep. So he dove in right near the edge and it was like a foot deep and he just cracked his neck and died. But the, the theory is that this was a crater. Hmm. So there's a lot of different theories on the, on the blue hole. Interesting. Interesting. See, you're, you are, um, you're educating me here about the blue hole. I, I kind of want to go now. I kind of want to go and make a video, like a summer video where we go take a swim in the blue hole. I would love to swim in it just to prove everyone wrong. I want to tie a rope around you and throw you in the blue hole. <laughs> you're going to tie a rope around me and hold the other side just in case I, just in case I freeze up. You're going to pull me right back what in. What if you get pulled in and then I get pulled in? Oh, then we both die. Then Josh, Jimmy, Jimmy could be the third man. You could be, you, Jimmy could have a rope tied to you, tied to me. You and me getting swallowed by a weird New Jersey blue hole. It'd be a great be, ending to the pod. It'd be the crescendo to the podcast. <laughs> it would it'd be, be a like crescendo. those. The New Jersey podcast guys, yeah, they got swallowed by the blue hole, the weird New and Jersey we blue hole. And we can prove it's actually for real. That's rumored the Jersey Devil swims in it. Yeah. So, um, yeah. We should do a video series this summer where we disprove weird New Jersey sites. Well, dude, we, we should invite we the go guys. To, we got to go back to Gravity Hill where the, your car goes backwards. Up what if? But what if we do a video series? What if we reach out to the weird New Jersey guys and say we want to go to 10 different sites this summer yeah we want to revisit all of them with you guys and we just go and we we jump in the blue hole you know we do like a kind of like because this could be a video series that people beyond even new jersey would like to see oh people love these weird and creepy like stories like new jersey weird new jersey has so much lore around it yeah i think we could really dive into some stuff there but we'll see we'll talk about it all we'll take it we'll take that offline jimmy how far is the blue hole from the spot we used to like hike at near the quarry oh far Oh, it's a totally different area. I thought yeah. you said it was close. I mean, it's it, close compared to where we are like right is, now. To get to the blue hole, is it a good hike from the road or is it like pretty close to where you park? You could pretty much drive right to it. Okay. Easy. Good All to right. Know. And with that, that's our last story of the day. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Any closing thoughts, fellas? Uh. Another beautiful weekend is upon us, so I hope everyone just uh, goes out and uh, enjoys themselves. And like we said in the beginning of the podcast, the days are flying by way too quickly. Get outside this weekend. Get off your phone for a little bit. Get off your technology. Enjoy nature and live a little bit because time is flying when you're constantly staring at a cell phone screen every single day. And, you know, I think that's something we're all working on here. We're trying to get off our phones. You weren't kidding about the nice weather. Yeah, it's going to be in the 60s again. 60s on Saturday and Sunday. It won't be like this past weekend in the 70s yet, but, you know, give me 60s and sun and we're good, man. We're chilling. I love it. You guys have any fun uh, plans for the upcoming weekend or is everyone just relaxing? Chilling, relaxing, hanging out. Maxing out. Yep. Jim? I got no plans at the moment. Nice, nice. Well, with that, I think it's time to uh, sign off. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the Garden State. We love uh, bringing you the news and we love our listeners and we hope you have an awesome weekend. We'll see you next Friday for more New Jersey news and banter. Have a great weekend. We're out of here. Later. Later. You're listening to the Garden State. The Dirty Jurors.